Hi, you guys. Welcome back to First Impression Friday. There are no big five releases this week, at least at the time of this filming. <laughs> so we are going to be looking at an indie company. Today it is the Avid Seamstress. They are based in Dorset, which I'm assuming is in Europe, England maybe. Um, and after reading um, their little background and story here. I always encourage you guys to read these because this is the beauty of indie sewing patterns is that there's like a personality and a person behind these creations. Anyways, you can read through um, a little bit about their company. But what I thought was interesting was this sentence here or this paragraph here. You might find that the average seamstress has a different way of doing things from other sewing patterns that you have followed. Through our experience, we found ways of making things simpler and more enjoyable while also building up your sewing skills. Trust our process. I promise that your garments will look incredible. So that is a bold statement, um, especially whenever you're like kind of, you know, reinvent not reinventing the wheel but you know redoing how the wheel is used or put together i don't know um but if you trust them it will turn out like that that is a hard thing for some people to do but if you find yourself getting frustrated while making garments and following traditional sewing patterns maybe their little way of doing it is indeed easier and simpler to follow. Certainly something that is, is intriguing to me. I'd love to see what different ways they have for assembling garments. The other thing to point out is that they have these patterns here that we're going to go over today. And then they, the, these are all printed, right? And they come in like a really pretty booklet and with like an envelope and like the whole nine yards. They are not all available in PDF format. PDF format is all sold on their Etsy. So you'd have to go to a separate place to purchase their digital sewing patterns. But we're going to look at these um, first, their entire collection, and then we will go to Etsy and see what's available there. Okay. Um, they do ship worldwide and they have, um, not workshops, they have information on where, oh, I thought they had information on where their, um, where they were stocked, but maybe not. Um, do, do, do. Yeah, maybe not. You'd have to reach out to them. They have information about if you want to become a wholesaler, but um, not where to find them. Normally there's like a list, you know what I mean? Of like where to find us. Um, but I didn't see that here. Okie dokie. So starting things off with, I think it goes from the newest, like most recent release to the oldest. Um, so we're going to start with this jump set, the jump set, jumpsuit and dress pattern. They are $25. That is pricey, but it's a printed pattern. Um, printed sewing pattern with additional pattern sheet. wonder what that means. Hmm, I don't know. Um, but we'll look at the Etsy pricing at the end and see how that compares to the printed option. That, I mean, I see, um, uh, oh gosh, not Colette, not Cashmere, uh, Closet Core. For like $22 uh, printed um, in the local shop that I teach classes in. So that's in that price range. Perfect for dressing up or down. The jump set will see you through special occasions, relax, weekend walks, or dancing till dawn. Yeah, that's everything. The jump set gives you a wonderful jumpsuit or dress that's chic and versatile while being super comfy. A unique yoke feature at the front with a wrap bodice and elasticized waist means there's no fiddly fastenings while inseam pockets and relaxed leg shape or floaty skirt shape will give them a nonchalant vibe. Belted or unbelted, the jump set looks great either way. Color pattern sheet and layers in the AO format. UK size is 6 to 26. Confident beginner. Suggested fabrics, light to medium weight woven fabrics like cotton, cotton lawn, poplin, corduroy, chambray, denim, linen, tinsel. How about alternating a striped fabric for an interesting yoke feature? That's cool. I always like whatever they include, not just the pattern types, I mean, sorry, the fabric types, but also like just a general description of the fabric to look for in the event that you might have something in your stash or, you know, and you can't really identify exactly what it is. If it's light to medium weight woven, you know you're good to go. Um, and then I like also how they give this suggestion to make something really unique. So that's cool. The supplies that you'll need, 
um, what you will receive, step-by-step -step instructions. The jump set is available in an Etsy version. All right, let's check that out since it's listed there. Here is Etsy. Here's their shop. And I wish it took us directly to that pattern, but it doesn't. Okay, so it looks like the digital patterns are 12 bucks. That's not bad. That's not bad. Certainly not the worst I've seen in terms of digital. When I do the um, sew together, the cap is 12. 12 now? I think. It started at 10, and I think now it's at 12, just because 10 was very limiting. Um, but yeah, so there it is. 12 bucks on Etsy. Great. So going back... Let's look at some of these photos. There are a bunch of them. So, jumpsuit, dress. This is the yoke thing that she was mentioning. Let's see if there's close-ups. Oh, there's the back. Yep, with the elastic waist and a little keyhole so you can get your head, well, get your whole body in it, really. Okay, so there is again on this model um it's interesting that this one is so blousey and this one there's like no length ease hardly at all so i'm curious to know which is the intention like this is pulling a lot on her and it's not blousey even in the back you can tell there's a big difference um, there's the dress, super pretty. If this is like a linen or something, 1000% so pretty. Lovely. There she is again. Okay, yep. Okay, there's the back and here's the belt that they mentioned. I quite like the belt with the dress. Okay, oh, that is so interesting. So the yoke becomes the sleeve. That's, I've never seen anything quite like that. This is probably what makes it more advanced though. This little bit right here is a little bit difficult to sew. Um, but that design is really interesting. And it doesn't look super blousey here. So I'm just wondering if the plus size model is just a little bit short-waisted and that's why it came out a little bit blousier. Um, so, you know, we're always should be checking our length, you know, measurements and everything else as well. Um, I kind of, I think I kind of like it a little bit blousey. I don't know. I think I would like it not blousey. Let's look at that again. If it were, if it did, like, if it's not going to be blousey, then I don't want the elastic and the seam, like just have it all one. But if it is going to be blousey and kind of fold over that elastic a little bit, then that's that's fine. That almost gives like a purpose to it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like this feels like the elastic and the waistband is there for a reason to create this blue on effect. This, I just want it to be one. I don't want that seam there at all anymore. Um, but it is really, really interesting now that I'm knowing now that I know to look for this little yoke thing. Cute. Very cute. Do we see line drawings or anything? Oh, wait, here they are. Oh, yeah, we did. I just didn't go far enough. There it is with the belt. There's the dress. I'm not getting this kind of like twirly vibe on the dress, though. It seemed to be a little more, a little less A line than they're indicating here. All right, and then these are our. Si our body measurements. So their size range goes from a 32 inch bust up to a 54 inch bust and a 34 inch hip up to a 56 inch hip. That's decent. That's really decent in terms of size inclusivity. I think that um, when I pulled everybody on Instagram, they said that a 60 inch hip was what was like considered truly like all inclusive sizing. Um, so they're not quite there. Um, another couple of sizes and they would be, but still, you know, pretty decent compared to some others that I've seen. And then this is finished measurements in centimeters, right? 
and then finished in inches. Yep. So you can see kind of a very blousey top, very, well, I'd say semi-fitted hip, and then the waist is brought in with the elastic. What do we have here? Well, how is that different? Hold on. Finished garment, jumpsuit, and dress bodice. Jumpsuit and dress bodice. Jumpsuit and dress. Oh, wow. That's a lot of measurements that they provide. Okay. So this is like the bottom supplies. And then here's your fabric. Um, how much fabric you're going to need. Do we get that in yards? No. Well, maybe we do. 44 inches, meters, 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 meters. No, just in meters. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, they really do have everything in the listing that I normally look for. I'm not, like, needing more information. They have everything I need to make an informed decision about buying this. Um, the navigation of their website is really good and easy to click through the pictures and see them nice and big for sure. Yeah, this is a great little, great little website. They have thought of it all. So now we can just focus on assessing the designs. This is the Coolots sewing pattern. And the Coolots provide the ultimate middle ground between skirts and trousers. All the swish factor of a skirt with the practicality of trousers. The Coolots are edgy, versatile, and a wardrobe staple for all seasons. The culottes feature a plated detail, large inseam pockets designed to sit flat and not interrupt the silhouette, a fitted waistband, concealed zipper at the back, and a wide hem. Fancy going full length, use length and lines included, and create yourself a gorgeous pair of trousers. Okay. So sizes 6 to 22, competent beginner to intermediate, lightweight, wo lightweight to medium weight woven fabrics, again, like cotton, cotton lawn, poplin, corduroy, chambray, Denim, linen, tinsel, moleskin, and velvet. Here are your supplies. Okay, good. This is what you get. All right. Now, let's take a look at these. I am I have thoughts. Um, I know for me, having a waistband sit at this position on my body is the least flattering for me. Um, I do have a little bit of like a belly pooch. So I just, it's not comfortable, plus it's like highlighting an area that I don't want to be highlighted. If these were higher waisted, I think they would look a lot better. Plus, I, if you've been watching my first impressions for a while, you'll know that anytime I am looking at pants, I am always wanting to see the pants without hands in pockets because hands in pockets is not a cute look. Yes, the model is more comfortable because you never know what to do with your hands when you're modeling, but it's not showing off the pants in the best way possible, right? See, they are always putting their hands in the pockets, always. <laughs> At least this one is showing a little bit better, like the leg line. I guess we can see a little bit of something here. Okay, here's the back. I guess I do wish we could zoom in one more time, but... This is as close as we can get. The back looks pretty decent, actually. Maybe a little bit full through here. Um, like her bum isn't quite filling it out, which those of us that have a bum, that's kind of good news for me. I know it's drafted for a little bit curvier of a body than she has. But the drag lines are minimal, you know, like pretty decent. So this is it with no hands in pocket and her hands are raised, which is also important because, you know, when you stand on your tippy toes or when you raise your arms, everything distributes in a different way, right? Um, but this does look really good when she's standing like that. Yeah, it's nice flat front. They are correct about the pockets, not adding too much bulk. There's not a lot of pulling here. Like, yeah, the fit looks pretty good. Hands in pockets, but... At least through here, this is sitting on her at a better place. I'm wondering what the intention is. Again, it seems like one, the, the straight model, the straight size models are sitting lower than the curvy model. So what's the, what was the intent? You know? And then now this one has all the information on one sheet rather than all those separate ones. 
fitted waistband, pleat detail, inseam pocket, concealed zip, wide hem. So it doesn't say where it's supposed to sit on the body, where the waistband is supposed to sit, high, low, medium, like where's it supposed to go? There's your booklet, and then back to the beginning. Yeah, all I wanna do is just pull these up on her. Um, so that would be something I would look out for. If I were making these, I would wanna make sure that the waistband fitted fit me at a flattering place on my body, and then I increase the rise if I needed to, to meet that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have the everyday shirt. This is everyone needs a fabulous shirt to dress up or down that effortless throw on that goes with everything and is versatile enough for all occasions. The everyday shirt is as smart or casual as your day or night demands. Okay. Relaxed fit, open collar, drop sleeves, cuff detail, mitered split hem, subtle yet quirky detail. Yes, yes, yes. Um, or a straight hem for a more boxy silhouette. All right. So there's some options on this one. Um... Just as well in a lightweight denim, a smooth tinsel twill, or a floaty viscose. Opt for a medium weight fabric for a more structured garment. Um, yeah, I mean, I get that they're, well, let's see. Lightweight to medium weight woven fabrics such as, and then list them all here. Okay, I think these two things working together in conjunction is enough information for someone to be able to pick a fabric. Okay. Oh, and this one is on Etsy as well. All right, let's take a look at the photos. Yeah, it's a really cute kind of like um, sort of cropped-ish, right? Um, like take on a button down that with the drop shoulder. It's like your, it's like a cropped um, button down that you stole from your boyfriend's side of the closet. This opening feels a little bit matronly you know that it mm, I don't know that I love this but that's just me being hypercritical actually I think I don't know is it giving jacket vibes now I'm kind of thinking maybe it looks like a jacket there's the back yeah it looks like she forgot her shirt um which I guess is a good thing for a sewing pattern, right? That way you can make it look like a shirt if you want, or it can be, it can literally be a jacket if you want. This is the split hem, which is interesting. Let's see a side view. Yes, thank you. Here's the side view. That's super cool. I think for this, the trick is not to go medium weight if you want it to look like a shirt. The drapier, the better on this one. So all of your flowy, rayon twills anything with rayon in it honestly um anything blended with rayon would be really good but the box the the more heavy weight your fabric is the more i think it's going to be the more it's going to look like a jacket and it might be confusing as to why you're wearing a jacket without a shirt or maybe not maybe in your lifestyle that's completely normal i think my friends would look at me like what? where's your shirt <laughs> But yeah, in the drapey fabrics, I think it's really cute. I like the length of it a lot, a lot, a lot. I think a lot of times these types of shirts, they just go so long. But I think the proportions look really good on her. Okay. Next, we have this A-line dress sewing pattern. Stunning A-line dress creates a classically flattering silhouette. Fitted bodice, loose sleeves, sophisticated V-neckline, this garment will add timeless elegance to any wardrobe, zipper at back, optional inner pockets, and short slash long skirt variations included. This is the long version. Um, Instagram story highlights and viewer sewing patterns. Okay, okay, okay. Light to medium weight fabrics, woven, chambray, crepe, silk, viscose, and cotton. And then all you need is fabric and thread. But didn't they say there was a zipper in the back? Zipper at back, so where they're missing that little supply. And no Etsy version on this. Okay, so it's your traditional, like, fit and flare 
Um, some things I'm looking for on a fit and flare are gaping at the neckline, which this one looks really good. The shoulder, which I'm going to need to see a closer photo. This looks okay from here, I think. And then where the waistline hits. This looks to be a little bit long on her, which you know what could also explain the rise on those pants. Maybe their length measurements are just on the short end for the bottom. You know what I'm saying? Like this, you can actually see right here. This is where her natural waist is because she's bending over slightly. So this that's where I want the waist seam to be, way up here. Um, that just gives the most flattering look, especially if you have curves. She doesn't have a ton of curves, so it's kind of here nor there for her. But if I had curves, this would be pulling on my belly. Um, that's why I like to have it here. And then it floats over the belly and you don't see it and you look 10 pounds lighter and it looks fabulous. Um, the shoulder here, again, she's leaning toward this side. So it's a little bit hard to tell, but I think it's okay. It doesn't look too tight. We are getting a, a, some drag lines, but nothing super alarming. How about here? Yeah, more drag lines going up to the sleeve. So maybe it is pulling a little bit. Just something to check. You know, the shoulder length, the, the sleeve seam should be hitting at that little, you know, joint between your shoulder and your arm. And then the sleeve cap should be going up and over the hump of your shoulder. So if you're getting like any kind of puckering here, it's because the sleeve cap, the sleeve, the shoulder, sorry, the shoulder seam is too long and it needs, it wants to, you know, be shorter. So this fits up and over. Sleeves and shoulders and this whole area right here are such a fine balance, right? Um, and then of course you're also checking to make sure that the bicep is wide enough. There's enough fabric going around the bicep. I think that's what's happening here because she has her arms slightly bent. So it's pulling here, which is also calling it, causing it to pull down here as well. Now why it's also not pulling on this side, I have no idea. <laughs> Okay, there's our very basic line drawings. You do have a center front seam. That makes for beautiful, um, like if you have a striped fabric, it makes for a really interesting looking um, garment. And then bust starts, your waist seam, and then back bust starts as well. And the sleeve has a little bit of a flare to it. Cute. Okay, here is yet another version of their size chart and whatnot. This one has sizes zero through eight. Yeah, zero through eight. Oh, which is a UK, okay, six to 22. So are those not the same measurements as before? Body measurements of 32 to 48. Oh, and then 34 to 51, they're not the same. They're missing, the first one I showed you must be, they must have graded out a couple more sizes. So that's interesting. Okay, the older we go, it looks like the less, the fewer sizes that they have. Got it. Okay, that's the A-line dress. Now we have a blazer. The blazer. Ooh, this is cute. Ready for any occasion. The blazer is an indispensable garment. Yes, I agree. Work, school run, jeans, busy weekend, around your shoulders, absolutely. Um, made from a variety of fabrics. Yep. Stylish, relaxed fit. Blazer features shoulder darts. Love that. Front pockets, paneled sleeves, which I think means two-piece sleeves, and is fully lined. It's a great introduction to tailoring and is aimed at intermediate seamstresses. You'll learn key skills such as constructing a sewing, a blazer collar, setting in paneled sleeves, and putting together a fully lined garment. It is a little bit more expensive, but not that much more. I was curious because this is a lot of detail. Okay, suggested fabrics are actually bulleted on this one. I think they use some kind of linen-y chambray or something. It is really, really just right up my alley. I love that look. Um, these are your supplies. And this is how much fabric and interfacing you need. It's a little bit small. I'm wondering if they have it here too. 
So yeah, let's take a look. I think the length is really good. In my opinion, you either want it this long or you want it short. And anything in the middle is awkward on me and my pear shape. So I'm okay with this one. Yeah, I think it looks lengthening, like it lengthens your body, especially when you have a top tucked in underneath it. Yep, here's your little welt pocket. You have a notched collar. The sleeve looks really good. This is the lining that's peeking out. Yeah, I mean, this seems to fit her really well. This isn't intended to be buttoned, I don't think. So I'm pretty sure that it's the way that it's fitted, it, it wouldn't close very well. But that's part of the gig, you know, that it's that, that slim tailored look, but that you would never button it. Yeah, look at the shoulder on this one. That is literally perfect. I love that. That looks great. The shoulder can come out, right? So long as the sleeve cap isn't too, <coughs> uh, what's the word? Like if, this, if the shoulder comes out, the sleeve cap has to be pointier um, because you're not actually putting your shoulder in there. Your shoulder's up here. So, but this looks great. I don't know. Can you tell the difference between this one and the last one? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, she just looks so cool, like a fashion magazine editor or something. I don't know. She looks really great, though. Yeah, and you can see here, no pulling or anything. I think some of this is just normal fitting from, or just normal, like, uh, movement caused that. I think it looks really good. Yeah, and that seam carries all the way around. So, in theory, you could easily crop it. And you even have that same detail on the sleeve might be interesting to explore like pattern blocking, like doing like a solid up here and then some kind of subtle stripe or something. Okay, yeah, this is the bigger version of the fabric requirements. This is the body measurement chart. It is in that smaller size range. And then finished. That one looks really sharp. Okay, here's the blouse. The blouse has, oh, has been awarded, highly commended in the 2021 British Sewing Awards. What does that even mean? I've never even heard of that before. You guys that are, you Brits have to fill me in on what this, like, is this a magazine or something? Oh yeah, Sew Mag. Highly commended. Is that like, they approve it? Like, what does that mean? Is it voted on? I need to know more information. Okay. Every woman's wardrobe needs that go-to top that is stylish and easy to wear. Okay. Um, elegant stand collar, three-quarter sleeve length, three-quarter length sleeves, loosely fitted, made without darts, includes a button placket, collar, and elasticated cuffs, making it ideal for competent beginners to sew their first blouse. Okay, Instagram highlights, the smaller size range, beginner to intermediate, cottons and other lightweight fabrics that are soft. Consider making the blouse in silk or viscose for added luxury. Fabric, thread, buttons, elastic. Where's the elastic going? Okay. Okay, so same issue. Okay. Here's the perfect before and after. This is how the sleeve should fit. Only because she's leaning to the side does it fit that way. This is how the sleeve should not fit. So we need to take just like the smallest amount out of her shoulder length just to get this to pull up just a little bit so that it looks like this. This is what you're going for. This is what you're not going for. Um, so this is kind of like falling off her shoulder a little bit, if you can imagine that. I'm sure we're going to get some like standing straight up photos, I hope. Um, the other thing is the buttons. 
the placement is a little bit off. Like I like to see a button right at the bust apex. That would prevent this little thing from happening. This doesn't necessarily mean that the blouse is too small. It just means that, you know, there's not a button in the right place. But I will say the fact that I see some pulling here and here, can you see that line? That makes me think even there's a little bit more wrong with the arm side. It just might be too, all the biceps might be too close fitting because then if there were room in the bicep, then it wouldn't be pulling here and it wouldn't be pulling here. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I think that this needs to be smaller and all of this needs to be bigger. It almost needs to be like a squattier, a squattier arm uh, sleeve head. Yeah, interesting. Okay. And here's where the elastic goes. It is a cute little design. I love the little stand collar. I love the elastic sleeve. And she's right. Like in a viscose, it looks really luxurious year round. I also like that they're showing us pictures of it untucked like this. That's super helpful to see how long it is. I would never wear it untucked like this. This is too long for me. Um, so it would be a tuck only shirt for me or at the very least a French tuck shirt only. But yeah, there it is. This is one of those where you really, really can let your fabric shine because there's nothing breaking it up. So if you have like a neat pattern, this is the one to use it on. All right, now we have city trousers. These look great. So effortlessly, effortlessly stylish. That's hard to say. City trousers reimagine a contemporary cigarette fit with a minimalistic chic flair. Now, you know, I do not promote the use of tobacco on this channel, so we will be referring to it as a pencil fit because if you have a pencil skirt, you can have a pencil pant. And there's no such thing as a cigarette skirt. <laughs> so um, pencil pant it is. Narrow waistband with invisible zip at the back creates the ultimate body slimming silhouette. Okay. Uh, side pockets, side slits at the hem. Okay. Same size range, beginner to intermediate, medium weight fabrics and fabrics with slight stretch will work well with these trousers, but they don't actually list them out. So I think that's a missed opportunity. They need to say something like cotton sateen, stretch twill, you know, all stretch denim, you know, all that kind of stuff. It'd also be helpful to know how much stretch. What is slight? 1%, 2%? What are they what are they working with here? But yeah, this little this whole little style is super cute. I might have maybe, maybe made them a little bit shorter, but that's just me. Hard to tell where the waistband sits, but I think because this sweater is oversized and it's kind of ducked in a little bit, it doesn't look short-waisted. I think all these drag lines make perfect sense for how she's posing. Oh, here we go. So they are sitting, I'm going to guess that where her thumb is is where her high hip is. So a couple of inches above that. So not quite going to the natural waist. Yeah, a little bit low slung. But still fitting well. It's not like they're low slung and then the crotch is too long. I don't think. That's the little pocket shape. Really cute and flattering. Yeah, I wish I could zoom in more. It might be a little bit long in the rise. So the, the thing with pant rise is if the waistband fits at this level, that's how long the rise needs to be. If the rise is this long, then the waistband needs to be smaller to fit at a higher point on your body. These two things work like they're like linked up together. One, one affects the other and vice versa. So it's just about intent and then sewing something that actually fits her fit model. So yeah, it's just, it's hard to tell just from these line drawings, but I will say the little slits are super cute. This is not a seam, I don't think, but 
yeah, hers aren't pressed in. So I'm not sure what this line is supposed to represent. Um, you do have back darts, your back zipper, and then the pockets that we looked at before. If the waistband is straight, like it's looking like here, then you would think it'd be higher up on the body. We also didn't see any pictures of the back of the pants, which is important too to see how much room is in the booty area. If there's enough to, you know, cover bigger booties. <laughs> But they're cute. They're a great jumping off point, right? Like we can we can hardly ever expect that something is going to fit us off right off the envelope, especially with pants. Like so making some rise adjustments or some adjustments to the waistband is par it's it's normal. It's totally normal. This is a great jumping off point. I don't see anything super egregious about the fit. It's just some things to look out for when you go to make it so that it turns out how you imagine it in your head. Okay. Coat sewing pattern. I like these names. They're just very straightforward. Like, they're not naming them after tea or flowers or anything like that. Like, we're just, this is our coat pattern, okay? <laughs> Inspired by classic tailoring, create a coat pattern that not only looks fabulous, but is an easy, enjoyable make. Um, princess seams uh, with the pocket sewn in that seam. I love that. Drop sleeves for a relaxed look. Um, range of fabrics, three quarter length hem. Yeah, this is nice. Medium to heavyweight wool, wool blends, linens, boucle, melton, which is also a type of wool. Here are all of your supplies. Yeah, very classic sort of trench coat, right? Yeah, I love it. The length is great. Is that a little pleat in the back? I like that. Drop shoulder. I love a little relaxed situation. Kind of like juxtaposes a tailored trench coat with this kind of like oversized version. It's like, again, like you borrowed your boyfriend's jacket. I love that. Yep. There's the princess seam with the pocket sewn into that seam versus it being sewn into the side seam. You ever like had a coat and then you're like, you're like reaching around behind you basically to find that side seam to put your hand in the pocket. This is just so much more of a comfortable way to, cause your hands are like in front of your body, you know? So you could leave them in there longer and that would be the intention to keep your hands warm anyways. Um, so that makes perfect sense. I love that. Yep. There's our little collar and it has a facing. You can see that there. Yep, the sleeve could be a little bit longer, maybe. Oh, I, maybe there, oh wait, there is a pleat there, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it looks really good. If I were making coats, this would be at the top of my list. Um, just clean, classic, simple, and like they said, a variety of fabrics. Okay, the day dress. I think now we can start to tell like the age of some of these designs. This does feel like this was popping off in the sewing world about five years ago. <laughs> I don't see many people making this kind of um, dress very much anymore. Not that it's not cute. It is super cute, especially for the fall with the tights like they have it here. Um, fitted bodice, gathered skirt, inner pockets, right? Very easy. Um, three ways of making the front bodice. All views have an invisible, invisible zipper. You can do a seam at the center front, buttons at the center front, or no seam at the center front. And the instruction booklet guides you through. UK sizes 8 to 18. Oh my goodness, even fewer sizes than the other ones we've been looking at. Lightweight to medium weight fabrics. Perfect for this pretty dress. Not suitable for stripes, diagonals, or plaids. And then always allow extra fabric. Okay. All right, let's see what we've got here. So this is the no center seam. The sleeve actually looks really great on this one. Maybe it's because it's short sleeved. I don't know. I gotta imagine they're using the same block, but maybe not, maybe not. The, even the waist seam looks good, like where it is positioned. There's the back. Okay. 
Here it is from the side. A little bit falling here. Hard to know if that's because her hand's in her pocket. I don't think so, though. I think it's just a little bit tilted. Because, you know, you have boobs here and you don't have boobs in your back. <laughs> right? So it technically should be a little bit shorter in the back than it is in the front. And then here's the center front seam, the buttons, and then the no center seam. Okay. But we only get pictures of the one. Oh, that's disappointing. Especially because she says that she has a lot of people who test her patterns. So even if she just threw up some tester patterns of the other versions, or tester photos of some other versions, that would be... I mean, I know they're not so nice and modely, but I guess still so you could see. Yeah, I mean, it's simple, but effective you know it's a great little pattern and one of those two that I think you could hack a bunch like consider that you know different necklines different sleeve lengths um, you could do pleated skirt you could do this skirt in different lengths you could add tiers you know what I mean it's a good jumping off point for lots and lots and lots of different designs so long as it's still fit and flare like you're still gonna have a fitted bodice um, I guess you could size up, but you just have to be careful because there starts and it starts to look a little bit funky when you just start making things that are too big for you versus things that are intended to look oversized, but made to look that way. All right, now we have the gathered dress. Where are the gathers? If you're looking for a casual dress that you can live in any day of the week, the gathered dress is perfect. It's been created with the modern woman in mind from the school run to the office. <laughs> gathered dress will help you feel stylishly smart yet comfortable. We've added a modern raglan sleeve but have kept the charming gathered waist at the back. Okay. An interesting and different style line. Let's see that. Other features include slim front silhouette, invisible zip, two different sleeve lengths. We've also added a dart at the shoulder to create an amazing finish. It's an ideal pattern for beginners as well as intermediates. Okay. Lightweight to medium weight fabrics, wovens, denim, chambray, crepe, silk, viscose, and cotton. All right. There is that. And then, like she said, it's a raglan sleeve with a shoulder dart, though. Couldn't you... Mm, is this... Mm, Raglan with a shoulder dart. I gotta say, I've never seen that. Oh, only the back. And here's the dart. I'll have to look at the line drawings. Okay, okay, let me get my head around this again. So the front is flat. The back has a horizontal seam with the gathers. That is a very interesting silhouette. That is correct. Yeah, here you can see all of it happening. Um, yeah, I guess my, one of my big problems with like shift dresses is that it hides my waist. So depending on how gathered you made this, it would be a way to kind of pull it in and give your body some shape. But you could only do it so much. Otherwise, it starts it would start to look weird and would pull the front in a weird way. But here's the raglan. Is this the shoulder dart that she's talking about? Yes. Okay, that makes perfect sense. That's kind of common, I think, for raglans. It definitely does help give the shoulder some definition, and it's not so, like, just, like, loosey-goosey hanging on you. It is a nice little detail. I definitely, mm, maybe, it doesn't look like this on the model. It's a little bit, like, roomier, I guess. The, the style line makes it look like it's going to be more of like a pencil silhouette, like close fitting. All of this ease in here makes it look like it's too big on the bottom for her, which, again, could be because she's drafting for a fuller booty because that's what would fill that out, right? Like hips and a booty. So maybe for those of us that are pear-shaped, her models aren't necessarily um, 
translating it very well, but maybe they are drafted for a little bit more of a figure than what is represented here, which is good news. So yeah, this one's interesting. Um, I think I'd probably want to make some changes just for me personally, like the, the long line plus the length feels like a lot to me. Like I want to make it a little bit shorter. And again, I'd want to play around with how much I could pull this in to make it look a little bit more fitted through the waist. But you can definitely see from here up, she has a figure. It's not completely hiding all of that. And then yeah, closer fitting through all of here. So yeah, interesting. And then shorten this. This is way too long. Her waist is up here somewhere. I think those few things would help. But wait, why does it look so short in the back? Like that's her, I don't know. Anyways. Oh, maybe, well, yeah, I don't know. It is interesting though. It's, it's definitely one of those that's kind of like, hmm, like it makes me think I could, you know, it makes me want to like play around with it a little bit. Okay, pajama bottoms, so elastic waist pants, $25, are we sure? These better be some phenomenal pajama bottoms. Um, perfect first sewing pattern. Full length, relaxed fit, elasticized waistband, side seam pocket, tie front. Created with an optional buttonhole or mock tie. It makes a gorgeous pair of trousers too. From relaxed day to a smart evening trouser. Yeah. Pajama bottoms have been created with you. The beginner seamstress in mind. Choosing the right fabric. Accurate measurements. Cutting out the pattern. Yeah, they really walk you through it all. 6 to 22 on the size range. Beginner. Light to medium weight woven fabrics. Which I think almost all the patterns have been exclusively that up to this point. Except for the jacket. Or the coat, sorry. Um, yeah, and they outline, if you're making pajamas, use this. If you're making trousers, use that. Okay. Okay, yeah. I mean, they're high-waisted. They sit at her natural waist. She has her hand in her pocket, so it's really hard to see the shape. This leg kind of sort of you can see. Yeah, high-waisted, but not a lot happening here to help with the diaper look of it all. Um, it either needs to be fuller through here, but again, her hand's in her pocket, so maybe that's what's causing that. It's just super hard to assess fit when you've got your hands stuffed inside the side of your pants. that you can't even see at all neither can you on that these are all super cute pictures but yep hands in pockets okay all right so yeah we can't see a ton but from what i can tell yeah it's your quintessential slim leg high-waisted pant um she might need some more fullness in the back to help with all of this pulling, that's what makes it look like a diaper. If this were uh, looser through here and none of these little things and it just kind of like fell away and fell over the bum, then it wouldn't look like a diaper. You just have to take my word for it. It also might be a little bit too slim or too long and slim. So just a few tweaks and this would be spot on. But I would like to see it as trousers and not just pajama pants. If you're charging me $25. Okay, raglan dress and top. Dress and top. Okay, simple modern dress and top. Cut an A-line silhouette. Facing an invisible zip at the back neck. With optional inner outer pockets. Short or long sleeves. It's versatile as it is as you are. Okay. Elegant and playful, the raglan beautifully sways with every step. Okay, 6 to 22, light to medium weight fabrics. All right, let's check it out. So, you have your, like, crew neckline, 
the sleeve does seem to be a little something funky happening with the sleeve. We'll look at the close-ups again. Um, but yeah, it just floats away from the body. Yeah, you can definitely see that here. Sideline looks really good, except for the sleeve. That's a really cute way of showing it. All the fullness through the through the hem. Again, maybe a little bit shorter for me, just to help with proportions a little bit, because I'm not as tall as she is. But with the long sleeve and the long dress and the fullness, it's just like a lot on people who are not 5'10". <laughs> There's the back. Yeah, the back fits really well. It's floating away from the body, no pulling through, pull, P-U-L-L, no, P-O-O-L, pulling through here, right? It's floating away and covering, like skimming her bum. Wait, is it, it's Raglan. It's Raglan, did it say that? It must have. It is Raglan, interesting, okay. So with that, then what is up with the sleeve? We didn't really get a close up of the sleeve, but if this is raglan, I'm noticing mostly how it's like scooping out here. So maybe it's just not wide enough. Maybe they, there's no dart here on this one, I don't think. So maybe it could be wider and then you add a dart in yourself. Other than that, everything else about it looks really good. We have the sheath dress sewing pattern. Pattern updated and new sizing, 6 to 22. I love a sheath. Easy to wear and a joy to sew. Classic shape, contemporary edge, rounded neckline, grown on sleeves, subtle shaping. All the makings of a modern classic. Adding a belt or an elasticized waist, inseam or patch pockets, your choice of fastening, button and loop closure, or simply pull it on. Okay, yeah. New to sewing, minimal pieces, easy to fit. Yeah, I agree. I agree with all of that. So because we have the grown on sleeve, right? Like you're not messing around with sleeve seams at all so the fit here looks really good you just have to be careful about your fabric choice um, if it's too structured then it looks a little bit uh, like there's like the fabric doesn't flow right and it I don't know it just looks funny so it has to have a little bit of drape to it but still maintain a little bit of structure because you have this fitted skirt There it is without the belt. Very interesting to see those two things back to back. Yeah, this line here means it's too tight on her bust. But when she wore it here, oh uh, yeah, we had those still, never mind. <laughs> I was like, I didn't see, I didn't notice them as much. I guess because I thought it was attributed to the belt. So that's one way to like disguise a fitting thing. Yeah, the back looks really good. Fits her really well. No pulling. Looks good. I like a grown-on sleeve. I think that they're, I mean, I know they're simple, but I don't know. I just think they're comfortable and cute. Maybe I'm just, like, really into the 80s right now. I don't know what's happening. But, um, yeah, I like them. I don't like them. And this is the kind of dress, too, that you could absolutely make out of a stable knit. You know, think about a lightweight ponte or something. What did she say for, oh, here we go. Light to medium weight woven fabrics. Not suitable for stripes, diagonals, or plaids. Okay. But yeah, I think you could definitely go stable knit on pretty much all of these that we've seen. This is, wait, that's the sheath and this is the shift. Now it's getting confusing. Now I wish we had flower names. Um, elegant silhouette that's modern, perfect for weddings, parties, fitted bodice, fitted sleeves, pencil skirt, 
with a panel on the bottom of the front skirt. The back of the skirt has flattering waist pleats. Kick pleat. Wow, there's a lot going on. Okay. 6 to 22, light to medium weight fabrics, wovens, chambray, crepe, silk, viscose, and cottons. Okay, let's see what all she's talking about. Oh, of course it's like a geometric fabric where I can't tell anything that's going on. Okay. <gasps> Look at the back. That's cute. Where? Are, what are these pleats? Oh, right here. Literally two pleats. Huh. That's such an interesting place for pleats. I also feel like, again, the waist is too low. And I want to pull it up to here. And then maybe that would make the pleats make more it's just mm, I don't love them because they're being pulled open so much but again that could just be because of where they're placed so low on her body the sleeve this time looks really good maybe a skosh in just oh I know I'm being nitpicky but just a little little bit to get rid of this guy and yeah, you can definitely tell the waist seam is way too low. It should be more up here. And then there was this, which you couldn't really see. I didn't even notice that it had this like shape to it. Did you? But I do love this scoopy back. It's really pretty. Definitely gives it a more elegant vibe. Do we have any pictures of her with it straight on? No, just this one from the back. But even still, it still looks like a pencil, not so much like a cocoon, like the other one made it seem. Cute. Yeah, again, a few little tweaks with fitting, and this one would be looking like a million bucks. All right, sundress. This is a cutie. Meet our beautiful sewing pattern, the sundress. All right, uh, go to formal dress. All right, fitted bodice, square neckline, wide modern straps, and a button down front. The bodice has front side dart and the back a waist dart. A pleated skirt with pockets offers fun, flattering silhouette as well as comfort and practicality for your day-to-day -day activities. The wide skirt hem finishes the look, fastened by a concealed zipper, six to 22. And light to medium weight fabrics, such as all those wovens they've been mentioning, plus striped linen for a classic take on the French Riviera style. Wow, okay. Don't mind if I do. Okay, and then that one is on Etsy. Okay, cool. You guys know I like this one. This is definitely my style. Easy, breezy, loose. I like the square neckline with a thicker strap. Yep, the back is nice. You can see how it's very, not very, but fit more fitted through the bodice, but not, not fitted at all. And then flares out with the um, pleated skirt. Lots of hands in pockets on this one still. The bodice is still too long. But I, I mean, I have to alter my bodice length for every pattern anyways it's nothing new for me to have to make this alteration it's just some of them I have to shorten by more than others <laughs> um so this one might be like instead of two inches like I have to do all my calls patterns this one might be like four um but yeah checking your length on your pattern pieces helps so much in terms of how it's going to flatter your figure and this one does have the buttons up the front here so it has the buttons up the front, but also a zipper in the back. So this is really like, you don't need, you don't have to make this a functioning button placket. You could just slap on some buttons. It doesn't have to work. Because to get in it, you do the zipper in the back. You know what I'm saying? But the covered buttons are really pretty, and they're kind of big too. This is a very interesting shot. Okay, good. So you can see that there is some shaping happening. It's not just like, a rectangle going around your bust there's actually a lot of shaping going on here 
Does this make some of you full figure gals nervous because it's so low? Interesting. It definitely makes her bust look bigger than it is. That's actually tripping me out looking at it now. I feel like I'm in like some hall of mirrors or something. Okay. Good, good, good. Great. Yeah, love that one. But I also always have loved sundresses. Okay. Oh, that's it. Okay. All right. So that is what we have from the Avid Seamstress. <clears throat> Here is the Etsy pattern collection. This is the sundress. Digital sewing pattern, the sundress add-on. So it's what we just saw, but with sleeves. Right? Oh. Yeah. It's a completely different dress. That's so interesting. Okay. So you buy the sundress for whatever it costs, and then you spend another $9 to get that whole separate bodice, which could also, by the way, just be a shirt. And then you just lengthen it, and you have a new top. So you could buy this even if you don't have the sundress pattern, and then you just have a new top pattern. There's the blouse slash jacket. There's the low rise pants. This is the silky blouse. We remember this one with the funky back. The blazer is on here, 12 bucks. This is the little swing dress, love that, pajama pants. Here's the, um, they call it the day dress. I'm thinking of like fit and flare, I guess. And then the sheath and the A-line and the shift. Here's our pencil pants. So yeah, they have a lot of them on there. There's the coat, there's the day dress, the sundress. Which ones aren't on here? She made it sound like, oh, this is not on there. Wait, was it? Now I'm confused. Wasn't it on the first page? Yeah, okay, there's that one. Just overlooked it. That was there, that was there. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, they're all on Etsy. Great. So if you are looking to get the digital versions, obviously you say it's like more than half off. Um, and, you know, print at your local copy shop and you're good to go because I think they're all available in AO. So that's great. So what do we think? What do we think of the Avid Seamstress? Um, very, very, uh, I think that they're, what am I trying to say? I think that their aesthetic is very specific. Like, I think the same girl is wanting to wear all of these things, whereas some other pattern companies jump from one style to another. I think if you like one of their patterns, you're going to like all of their patterns. You know what I'm saying? Um, of course, there's always outliers to that statement, but... Um, and I think as with most patterns, if you go into it knowing that you're going to need to make some tweaks and some alterations, it, this is fine. This is fine. I was just able to identify some of those things that you're probably going to have to look out for by looking at the models. Sometimes I just can't see them or they fit the models perfectly. But when you get it home, you know, and you're fitting it to yourself, it doesn't fit you like it fits the model. I quite like the fact that you can see some of the, the drafting, um, like the, the fact that the sleeve is consistently, the shoulder seam is consistently too long is super helpful to me because I know that I'm going to have to check that on every one of their patterns. Whereas if in one pattern it fits well and the other pattern it doesn't, then I, I never know and I might forget or whatever. So I don't mind noticing those fitting issues. I don't see it as a bad thing at all. Um, I mean, I'm going into it all my patterns knowing I have to make some sort of alteration. So the fact that I know what I have to look out for when I'm getting started, that is helpful, I think. 
Um, the designs are really cute, maybe a little bit too, um, like professional, too conservative for me, but there are some really good, um, options in here. Like I love the crops. Well, I don't know if it's meant to be, but this little crops top of the blazer I adore. Um, maybe if some of these were a little bit shorter, I would like them more. The back on this is really cute and the sundress I really liked too. So there's some good ones in there, but I'd like to know what you think. What were your, what dress is this? What were your um, favorite patterns? Are you gonna be grabbing any of them? Also, if you've ever made a avid seam stress pattern before, let us know your experience. I've never sewn one, so I can't really speak to what the pattern instructions are like, but if you have thoughts, um, please leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, that's going to do it for me today. I will see you all very soon. Bye!